Hello everyone, once again welcome back to my channel Mariner Shiar. If you are new to this channel guys, press the subscribe button and press on the bell icon for future notification. In this video, I am going to speak about basic reference cycle in a much more simplified and practical point of view sense. So guys, stay till the end of this video as this video is going to be very helpful for you guys. So guys, let's go to the video and check out what it is all about. So in this video, rather than going in a much more theoretical point of view, I will be concentrating on a practical point of view sense. So speaking about reference cycle, there are four major components in the reference cycle that are compressor, condenser, metering device or thermal expansion valve and evaporator. So I want you to understand the following component in this particular order that is compressor, condenser, metering device or thermal expansion valve and evaporator. So these are the major component of the refrain cycle and I want you to remember the following component in this particular order as I have told before. Now let's analyze the four components and give them a nickname. Compressor is the pressure increaser, condenser is the heat rejector, thermal expansion valve or metering device is the pressure dropper and evaporator is the heat absorber. So these are the nickname of the following four component that is pressure increaser, heat rejector, pressure dropper and heat absorber. So guys keep in mind these are the major component nicknames. The entire reference cycle is governed by ideal gas equation that is PV equal to NRT. There is no any fancy equation in this particular reference cycle. If you want to be a good marine engineer all you have to keep in mind is the ideal gas equation that is PV equal to NRT. Ideal gas equation that is PV equal to NRT. All the properties are interrelated and connected to each other. As the pressure increases the temperature is also going to increase. As the pressure increases the volume is going to decrease. So all are interrelated and connected to each other. So guys keep that in mind. And now talking about the kind of refrigerant that we are using in the refrigerant cycle. Earlier time we were using water and air and as the time went by now we are using much more environmental friendly kind of refrigerant causing less impact on the ozone layer depletion and global warming. Earlier we were using chlorofluorocarbon, hydrofluorochlorocarbon as the chlorine is present in the refrigerant it causes a huge impact on the environment R11, R12, R22, R134 and so on. So basically as the time passed by and as we are entering a new era the refrigerant are causing less impact on the environment that is on the ozone layer depletion and global warming. So in the refrigerant cycle, the refrigerant is continuously pressurized and depressurized so as to manipulate the temperature. As we already know, ideal gas equation PV equal to NRT. If you manipulate the pressure, the temperature is also getting manipulated. If you increase the pressure, the temperature is also going to be increased. So ideal gas equation is going to be very useful as the video unfold as I have told you earlier also. Temperature is basically manipulated so that to get the heat in and out of the refrigerant. Saying it one more time, the basic goal in this particular refrigerant cycle is to get heat in and out of the refrigerant. So you may know we are not doing anything fancy. We are just pressurizing and depressurizing so as to manipulate the temperature. We are pressurizing the refrigerant in order to increase the temperature. So as the temperature increases, it is very easy for the refrigerant to get rid of the temperature that is the heat is being rejected in the condenser and we are depressurizing the refrigerant so that the temperature decreases and it is able to absorb the heat from the evaporator and make the room or that particular chamber cold. Now how pressurization and depressurization is done on the refrigerant? Basically pressurization is done by compressor and depressurization is done by thermal expansion valve or metering device. Now more technically speaking, what is temperature? Temperature is nothing but the average molecular velocity of the substance. We can simply manipulate the average molecular velocity of the refrigerant by simply changing the volume of the refrigerant. In the compressor, the volume of the refrigerant is being reduced. So as the volume reduces, the molecular velocity is going to increase and obviously the temperature is going to increase. In the thermal expansion valve or metering device, the volume is increased. As the volume increases, the molecular velocity of that particular substance that is our refrigerant is decreased. So as the molecular velocity decreases the temperature also reduces. So obviously we can say that molecular velocity and volume is connected. 
and obviously then we can connect the volume and temperature also as PV equal to NRT. Now let's have a discussion on each component that is compressor, condenser, metering device or thermal expansion valve and evaporator. Now talking about compressor, temperature at which fluid boils or condense is known as saturation temperature and the saturation temperature varies as per the pressure. Compressor in the refrigerant system is causing the increment of the pressure. So as the pressure increases, the saturation temperature is also going to get increased. So that the saturation temperature of that refrigerant is higher than the seawater or air in the condenser. So as there is difference in the temperature between refrigerant and seawater or air in the condenser, there will be heat rejection from the refrigerant to the seawater or air. So basically compressor increases the pressure so that the saturation temperature also increases. And you can say that compressor also acts as a pump so as to give a push to the refrigerant. Note that here the refrigerant is in the form of vapor that is vaporized foam, superheated vaporized foam as it is coming out of the evaporator zone. And from the evaporator the compressor sucks in and increases the temperature and pressure. As the pressure is being increased, the saturation temperature is being enhanced, that is increased. We are talking about condenser. Here in the condenser, the refrigerant is being liquefied or subcooled to a temperature below the saturation temperature. Basically here, the water or air in the condenser is taking out the heat from the refrigerant. So basically the refrigerant is rejecting the heat. And now the latent heat from the evaporator in the refrigerant is now being transferred to the water or air in the condenser. So basically refrigerant rejects all the heat to the water or air in the condenser. And note that the refrigerant is having the same pressure that is being created by the compressor. And now the refrigerant goes to the thermal expansion valve or metering device. And now comes the metering device or thermal expansion valve. The thermal expansion valve or metering device is a regulator through which the refrigerant passes from a region of high pressure area to a region of low pressure area. Here in the thermal expansion valve or metering device, the pressure is being dropped. As the pressure is being dropped, the saturation temperature of the refrigerant also drops. So as the saturation temperature of that particular refrigerant drops, it will boil off at a much more lower temperature than usual in the evaporator region. The thermal expansion valve or metering device throttle the liquid refrigerant and it maintains the pressure difference between the condenser that is high pressure side and the evaporator that is the low pressure side. It also gives a adequate and correct amount of refrigerant to the evaporator in a given period of time. Thermal expansion valve is thermostatically controlled. The thermal expansion valve have got a bulb at the outlet of the evaporator. So basically this is the sensing element that is the bulb which measure the superheat of the refrigerant going into the compressor. So as per the degree of superheat of the refrigerant that is the vaporized refrigerant passing to the compressor, the thermal expansion valve throttles that is opened or closes. So as it opens, the expansion of the refrigerant happens, the pressure drops and the temperature also, also drops that is the saturation temperature drops and the liquid refrigerant flash off or boils in the evaporator section. Now talking about evaporator, refrigerant entering the evaporator section will have a low temperature that is it will be having low saturation temperature. As it is having low saturation temperature obviously the boiling point of that particular refrigerant will also be low. So it receives the latent heat from that particular room or from that particular cabin and it boils off. The liquid refrigerant boils to a superheat vaporized foam and it is being sucked in to the compressor and in the compressor the pressure of the refrigerant is being increased so is the saturation temperature of the refrigerant is increased from the compressor the vaporized refrigerant with high saturation temperature and high pressure will come to the condenser side where the refrigerant will condense to a liquid foam and it will be subcooled to a temperature below sea water or air this is how the refrigerant cycle work the compressor, condenser, metering device or expansion valve and the evaporator that is pressure increaser, heat rejector, pressure dropper and heat absorber. Hope you understood the flow of refrigerant, how the refrigerant is being pressurized and depressurized. And you might also understand how 
the ideal gas equation that is PV equal to NRT is in connected with the refrigerant cycle. I hope you understood the circle how the refrigerant flows from a high pressure side to a low pressure side and how liquid boils off and how it is condensed and how refrigerant enhance the refrigerant cycle. If you find this video useful share with your friends and press on the subscribe button and press on the bell icon for future notification. Thank you and have a nice day.